Guys, look at that. That is absolutely crazy. What's up, my friends? Welcome back. Today we are outside. There's a clear sky, not a cloud in sight. The sun is beating down, so we got out the solar scorcher because I jumped down to the comments and I found this one from Christy Lansu, who says, can you cast metals with a solar scorcher? So we're putting this to the test because there's no better opportunity to do this than today. Now for our metal melting experiments today, I got three different types of metals I thought we could work with. The first one is pewter. You might remember the pewter from the video I did with Collins Key where we melted down with a blowtorch and tried making fidget spinners. I've also got one of the aluminum muffins that we got from melting down pop cans in the backyard metal foundry, as well as one of these little brass ingots I made from melting bullet shells. Now the melting point of these metals is very, very different. The pewter, for example, melts at 250 degrees Celsius. The aluminum melts around 660 degrees Celsius and the brass melts somewhere between 900 and around 950 Celsius. And I did that in Celsius for my international fans. So let me know if you appreciate that. So to get started, I'm gonna take this solid pewter fidget spinner that I made with Collins. We're gonna direct the sunlight at it and see just how long it takes to get this thing liquefying, if at all. Now, some of you guys remember the solar scorcher. This is a lens that came off of a giant TV and it basically acts as a giant magnifying glass and directs the light into a super hot laser beam which converges somewhere around here. If we try shooting a little mist of water at it, we can actually see the exact focal point. Now, what's really interesting about this is I can actually hold my finger within an inch of that beam and not feel anything. But if anything crosses into it, it instantly burns into flames because that focal point is over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, which should be enough to melt metal. How crazy is that? All right guys, so now that we know exactly where that focal point is, let's go ahead and take one of our metals. Let's start with pewter and just slowly dip it into that solar laser beam and observe what happens. All right, so there's our laser beam right there. If we light it up, you can see it's thick down here, it's thin right there, and right about there is where we want to put our metal. Now watch your eyes because this is going to get bright. Here we go. Dang, I can't even look at that. trying to find that laser beam again. It looks like we're still in it. I can actually see part of the metal starting to go molten there. If you look at the bottom, you can actually see it shimmering, shining, splendid. Just gotta keep that focused. Oh wow, so a piece of metal just dripped off onto the concrete there and spattered. Ooh, nice. Guys, look at that. That is absolutely crazy like just sticking this thing in the sunlight and it started melting off and it's on my sidewalk. Look at that. There's splatters and drips all over my sidewalk. Yeah, look at that, just within seconds. Within seconds, it already starts liquefying at the top and that's gonna drip right down on my sidewalk. Crazy. All right, so apparently this thing will take down pewter without any problem at all. I'm thinking what we're gonna do is take all of our pewter spinners and remelt them into a pewter ingot using a muffin tray. Okay, so here's what I've done, guys. I've taken a board and set it across the solar scorcher here. I've got the pewter spinners inside of a muffin tray, and when I set those on top, it should be in the exact focal point of our ray of sun. This way I can keep them stationary, I can keep them static, so the sunlight can do its full potential without me jiggling around in the focal point. Let's see if it works. All right, looks like right about here. And there we go, pewter away. Power of the sun, do your stuff. Looks like that should be right about the perfect focal point. Look at that, within seconds, you can actually see the metal is boiling and bubbling on top. And I could stick my finger here and not get burned, and yet it's melting metal less than an inch away. That is nuts. Melting metal with sunlight, guys. And not only that, it's happening fast. Look at that, it's just dripping away, like nothing. And this is 100% solar energy. There's nothing else going on here. You can see the pool of liquid metal down at the bottom there. It's actually taking that down so fast, I'm tempted to put another piece of uh, pewter in there just to make a proper ingot. So I'm gonna add this little bit of pewter that uh, we didn't finish up at Colin's house. I'm gonna put it into this mix so that we have one full ingot. I want you to see the power of this thing because if the sunlight melts this, we're talking about the same power as my map gas torch that was taking that down with that super hot flame, which is absolutely incredible when you consider there's no fuel source here except for the sun. There, look at that. You can see exactly where the sun's hitting it and it just starts melting. We are melting metal with the sun. It's so cool. You just gotta keep it in that focal point for maximum heat, but it's keeping the whole thing liquid. And if you look down the bottom there, it's still a whole molten pool of pewter. It's working. In fact, I can just throw that whole thing in there now. It's like an ice cube melting into a pewter pool. Everywhere I put that solar beam, you can just see if I move that around a little bit, I can actually direct where it starts melting. Let's 
try this. Move it over here a little bit. Boom. Look at that. That is a beautiful thing. <laughs> that thing is almost completely melted. But that is ripping hot. You can see that's totally molten. Yep, there's nothing solid in there whatsoever. It's completely liquefied. So I'll just skim some of that slag off the top and let it cool down. Boom, molten pewter from the sun. So what I'm curious about now is if sunlight will take down pewter so quickly, how will it react to aluminum? That's coming up next. So quick update guys, I'm a little bit discouraged by these results. I was really, really hoping that sunlight would melt aluminum, but we've sat here for the last 20 minutes and we've concentrated the sunlight on it and you can see that nothing's really happened. I'm sure this ingot is extremely hot right now, but it hasn't in any way liquefied and I'm not sure how long it would take to do that. Now on the other hand, you can see the pewter has completely solidified and we could turn that upside down, knock it out and have ourselves a little pewter ingot. But as far as the aluminum, I'm almost ready to give up. And if we can't melt aluminum, I know we won't melt brass. Now, to be fair, this does get hot enough to melt those metals. It's just the quantity of the metal we're trying to melt. In this case, we've got quite a bit of mass. And even though this one little point in the middle is actually hitting somewhere around 2000 Fahrenheit, the whole block itself doesn't rise in temperature enough for the metal to melt. And if aluminum is not gonna melt, copper has absolutely no chance. I'm sure this thing is ridiculously hot right now. Listen to how it sounds when I pour a little water on it. Dang, that was extreme. In fact, that was so hot, it looks like it was nearly ready to melt. And uh, perhaps if we let it sit out for another 10 or 15 minutes, it would have. But it's obviously not a very practical method for melting metal. All right, let's check out the pewter. Can we knock that out? Boom, there's our pewter ingot. What's interesting about the pewter is it's got all these little bubbles on the bottom. It's very interesting. It makes me wonder where those came from. It's pocked all the way around with little bubbles. Relatively smooth on the top, not really. <laughs> Looks like craters on the moon. There you have it guys, the moon's made of pewter. All right, so what do we got? We know the solar scorcher definitely gets hot enough to melt pewter. It almost gets hot enough to melt aluminum. It will not get hot enough to melt brass in large quantities. But there is one thing that I wanna try. Maybe we can't melt an aluminum ingot, maybe we can't melt a copper ingot, but will it be enough to melt a brass cartridge casing? Let's give that a try for one final experiment. All right, make sure I don't get my head in that laser beam. That could be terrible. All right, here we go. Where's that focal point? Where's that focal point? Somewhere around here, I imagine. Is it just my mind playing tricks on me or is that bullet shell actually smoking? That's a good sign. It's changing color. You can see it's turning a little bit yellow. Just gonna play with the focal point here a little bit. Kind of looks like it's right about here. It's got some kind of a white film forming on the outside. Obviously some kind of reaction taking place. It's obviously getting hot, but I don't see any smoke. I don't see it going incandescent. I would like to see that thing melt. I'm hoping that it will melt. Ooh, look at that. It's so hot, it's actually burning the wood. Yep, that's obviously hot. It's leaving scorch marks in the wood, but it's not melting the actual brass itself. So I gotta jump in and be honest here, guys. I was fully expecting this brass casing to melt. And I think the reason it hasn't melted is because we've lost our sun. It's past the point of no return. We should have caught this earlier in the day. But in any case, you can see this is so hot that when we set it down on a piece of wood, it actually scorches the wood instantly. That's still excessively hot, even though we didn't get it to melt. And I think it's good to know because you're not always gonna have ideal situations trying to cast with sunlight. All right guys, so quick summary of what we tried here today. We tried to see if sunlight would actually melt metal and we tried three different metals, pewter, aluminum, and brass. What we found today was very interesting. The pewter was taken down in no time at all. It melts very, very quickly, but it also has the lowest melting point at about 250 degrees Celsius. Now, when we tried doing the aluminum ingot, we put it in the sunlight for about 15 minutes with no noticeable results. The biscuit was so hot it made the water boil to the point where we saw the Leyden frost effect, but we never actually saw the biscuit melt. 
Now, whether or not it would have melted over time, who's to say? And the reason we didn't get that muffin to melt isn't because of the temperature. We actually did get up to a high temperature, but there wasn't enough energy from the sun to melt that much aluminum. Now, if aluminum didn't work, we had no hope for brass whatsoever, but we did try one of the cartridge casings, and under some circumstances when the sun is directly overhead, I think this would have worked. I have been successful melting steel screws in the past, so I'm not sure why we didn't do a copper cartridge today. However, it's good to see that it doesn't always work. The location of the sun, the time of year, your position on the earth, these are all factors that play into whether or not this will be successful. So for practical use, I would say melting metals like lead, copper, and obviously gallium, yeah, sunlight's the way to go. No problem whatsoever. But when you get into metals like aluminum, brass, copper, gold, I don't think it's really gonna work on a practical basis. But it was still a fun experiment and we learned something new today. And a big thanks to Christy Lansu for putting a suggestion down in the comments below and helping make this video happen. Christy, go check your YouTube inbox, I'm sending you 25 bucks. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. <laughs> Watch where you put your fingers, man. Whoops. <laughs> Sketchy. Hey guys, I wanted to jump back in for just a second to invite you to come follow me on Instagram. I've got a very active page where I post daily pictures and stories of behind the scenes and every day is an adventure. Just take five seconds right now to click the link in the description to come follow me on Instagram at the King of Random, and I'll see you there.